punches that shatter skulls, screams that explode heads, or frozen brains cracked like glass. On screen, they look unstoppable. But today, we're ranking these moves not by style points, but by scientific plausibility. The closer a fatality gets to actual physics, the higher it climbs. Spoiler, one of these finishers actually flirts with real science, Scorpion's Flaming Chain. But before we get there, let's test the basics. If you like this kind of nerdy breakdown, hit like and stick around. So, could raw muscle or a scream alone really kill? Jax is the guy you call when you need something broken. With his giant cybernetic arms, he punches so hard that enemies' chests collapse like soda cans. It looks brutal, but can a punch really do that in the real world? Breaking bones is definitely possible. It takes around 800 to 1,000 pounds of force to break a rib, and elite boxers or martial artists can sometimes hit close to that range. Add Jax's metal arms into the mix, and it's pretty believable that he could snap ribs and even crush a sternum. But here's where the science fights back. The body isn't just made of bones. It's full of muscles, fat, and organs that act like shock absorbers. They spread out the impact, making it much harder for a punch to pass through everything at once. So caving in a whole chest in one blow would need way more energy than even Jax could deliver. And then there's the recoil. Newton's third law says for every punch Jack throws, an equal force slams back into him. His cyber arms might handle it, but what about his shoulders, spine, and muscles? Without insane reinforcement, his own body would get wrecked from the inside out after just a few hits. So yeah, Jax could realistically crush bones and kill with a punch, but it wouldn't be instant, clean, or repeatable like the game shows. He's dangerous, but not unstoppable. That's why his fatality lands in Tier B. Sindel has one of the flashiest finishers in Mortal Kombat. She lets out a scream so powerful, it makes skulls explode and bodies collapse. On screen, it looks terrifying, but in the real world, sound just doesn't work like that. A scream is just moving air. Even the loudest scream a person can make is about 120 decibels, which is as loud as standing next to a jet engine. That's enough to hurt your ears or maybe rupture an eardrum, but nowhere close to breaking bone. The military has built sound cannons that can make people dizzy or scatter crowds, but those are powered by giant generators. They can't even kill, let alone blow up a skull. Medicine gives us another clue. Doctors use ultrasound to break kidney stones. And that's sound too, but it takes precise machines blasting focused waves for long periods of time. Your lungs and vocal cords simply can't create that kind of energy. If Sindel tried in real life, her own throat would rip apart before anyone else felt more than a ringing in their ears. Sound is tricky. It can hurt, annoy, and even damage you over time. But a scream powerful enough to pop heads like balloons is impossible. There's no biological system that could channel enough energy into vibrating air. That's why Sindel's fatality is pure Mortal Kombat fantasy. It looks scary, but physics throws it straight into tier F. Sub-Zero's fatalities are some of the most iconic in the franchise. He freezes enemies solid in seconds, then shatters them like ice statues. It's dramatic, but if you ask physics, it's completely impossible. Here's the problem. Freezing takes time. Even if you dunked a human head in liquid nitrogen, a cryogenic liquid colder than anything on Earth, it would still take 10 to 20 minutes to fully freeze through. That's because heat can only leave a body so fast. Sub-Zero's instant freezing ignores the rules of thermodynamics. And even if you somehow did manage to freeze someone solid, Breaking them apart wouldn't look like glass shattering. Frozen tissue doesn't behave like crystal. It bends, cracks, and crumbles unevenly. Think about smashing a frozen turkey. It breaks, but not cleanly. The game makes it look neat and sharp, but frozen flesh would be messy, with slushy insides and jagged breaks. There's also the problem of energy. Freezing an entire body that fast would take massive amounts of power, 
way beyond what a human or even a superhuman ninja could handle. You'd need a whole industrial setup just to freeze one person, not a pair of magic hands. So while Sub-Zero's moves are among the coolest to watch, they collapse completely when compared with real science. Freezing is slow, messy, and energy hungry. That's why his fatality ends up at the very bottom in Tier F. Kenshi's blade finishers are all about style. He slices enemies clean in half, and their bodies fall apart like a perfect puzzle piece. It looks smooth and cinematic, but bodies don't cut that way in real life. Here's how cutting actually works. A blade focuses force on a tiny edge, pressing until the material breaks apart. Skin and muscle are easy enough to cut, but bone? That's another story. Bones are strong, layered, and designed to resist stress. That's why even surgeons use saws, not knives, when they need to cut through them. In real sword fights, blades don't glide through bodies like butter. They bend, chip, and often get stuck when they hit bones. To slice a whole torso in half with one motion, Kenshi would need insane strength, perfect technique, and a blade made of magic level materials. Even then, it probably wouldn't be a clean slice. The body is full of tendons, cartilage, and ribs that can catch the blade. So could Kenshi kill someone with his sword? Absolutely. Blades are deadly, and real history is full of proof. But the flawless anime-style cut that leaves two clean halves on the ground? That's pure Mortal Kombat flair. That's why Kenshi's fatality lands in Tier B. It's deadly, yes, but the perfect slice belongs to the world of fantasy. Scorpion's Flaming Chain is one of the few fatalities that brushes against real science. Fire and heat are real weapons, and humans already use them in industry. Plasma cutters, for example, slice through metal with streams of superheated energy. So, in theory, a burning hot chain could do some real damage. But here's the catch. A chain heated until it glows would lose its heat the moment it touched skin. To actually cut like the game shows, it would need a constant power source basically a portable generator feeding it energy non-stop. Without that, it would cool off almost instantly. There's also the issue of materials. Normal steel gets weak and bends when it gets too hot. To survive those temperatures, you'd need special heat-proof ceramics or exotic metals. Some of those exist, but they're brittle. Whip them around like Scorpion does, and they'd probably snap apart after a few swings. So no, Scorpion's flaming chain wouldn't really work as a combat weapon. But the idea of cutting with fire and heat is real. Plasma torches already do it every day in factories. That's why this fatality isn't totally impossible, it's just wildly impractical. And that's what earns Scorpion's finisher Tier A. It's closer to real science than most Mortal Kombat moves, even if it wouldn't survive long outside a lab. Sonya's fire kiss looks like pure movie magic. She blows a kiss, and her enemy bursts into flames. But out of all the fatalities, this one ties the most directly into real-world science, because people actually do fire breathing. In circus shows and stunt acts, performers spray a flammable liquid from their mouths, then light it to create giant fireballs. It's super dangerous, but it works. The science is simple. Fuel, oxygen, and a spark make fire. That's basically what Sonya's kiss represents. Stylized pyrotechnics turned into a weapon. And fire is one of the deadliest weapons ever invented. At just 150 degrees Fahrenheit, skin starts breaking down. Open flames easily reach over a thousand degrees, enough to cause third-degree burns in seconds. Flamethrowers in war and even fireworks rely on the same chemistry, fuel, and ignition to create devastating heat. Fireworks are proof that small chemical reactions can produce explosions strong enough to melt metal. Put that on a human body, and the results would be horrifyingly real. So no, Sonya doesn't literally have fireworks hidden in her lipstick. But fire as a weapon is absolutely real. And fire breathing shows us that the visuals aren't far away from what we already do. The way she delivers it is fantasy. But the end result is deadly science. That's why Sonya's fatality earns Tier S. It's flashy, 
it's dangerous. And unlike the others, it's rooted in something humans actually have pulled off. So after breaking them all down, here's how the science stacks up. Jax and Kenshi end up in Tier B. Their moves are possible in some form, but not nearly as clean or instant as the game makes them. Sindel's Scream and Sub-Zero's Freeze crash into Tier F because sound and instant freezing just don't work in reality. Scorpion climbs up to Tier A thanks to plasma cutting tech that proves fire and heat can slice through almost anything, even if you couldn't swing it around in combat. And at the very top sits Sonya. Her fire kiss lands in Tier S because pyrotechnics and fire breathing are real, deadly, and already part of human history. Her style is game magic, but the science behind it is frighteningly close to home. So yeah, Mortal Kombat fatalities are mostly fantasy, but every now and then, one sneaks closer to reality than you'd think.